I'm very excited to announce the release of a new video course on Bitcoin, blockchain, and decentralized projects. The universe of Bitcoin is evolving at a breakneck pace. I hope this three and a half hour course will provide one of the fastest ways possible to get up to speed. The course gets a little technical and is mostly targeted at developers, but I try to stay at the concept level for the most part and hope it will also be insightful for people that just want to learn more in general about blockchain technology and its potential applications. Here's a quick summary of the course contents. There are four modules, starting with an introduction to Bitcoin concepts and basic usage, including how to get it, store it, and the question of why it has any value at all. The second module follows with a look under the hood to get tangible insight into how it works. The third module explains the latest features in Bitcoin, like segregated witnesses and lightning networks, and also some of the challenges like the capacity concerns, the block size debate, and how to address those with hard or soft forks. The fourth module surveys a number of promising decentralized projects beyond Bitcoin, including important altcoins like Monero, Dash, Litecoin, and also non-currency projects like Ethereum, prediction markets, private blockchains, IoT, identity, and storage-related applications like IPFS. I do have to warn you that Pluralsight is paywalled, but you can get a free trial to watch 200 minutes of this 210-minute course. I'll also be posting several demo excerpts from the course, including how to use hardware wallets like Trezor, how to create and broadcast a transaction programmatically with the BitCore JavaScript library, and how to create and use Ethereum contracts. The rest of this video will go into more detail about the course contents. The first module is designed to get beginners up to speed on both the concepts and basic use of Bitcoin. It begins with the big ideas behind Bitcoin, like privacy, openness, and programmability, and it attempts to explain why Bitcoins have value. It then follows with several demos showing how to use Bitcoin, starting with how to get it from exchanges in person to at ATMs, to how to spend it on a website with a mobile phone, accept it on your own website as payment, and finally how to securely store it in a hardware wallet or in cold storage with a paper wallet. The second module dives into how Bitcoin works under the hood, explaining the key foundational concepts that underlie Bitcoin, like digital signatures and cryptographic hashes, and how those are used to create transactions and secure the blockchain. I use a JavaScript library called BitCore to show you how to programmatically make an address and send a transaction. I answer some questions like, what keeps the people running the Bitcoin network from stealing your money? And how is it that you can create a new Bitcoin address without checking to see if someone else hasn't already used it? The module also includes information about mining, double spend attacks, and SPV wallets, which is how you can trust mobile phone wallets. The third module goes over the latest and upcoming features in Bitcoin, starting with HD wallets, or hierarchical deterministic wallets, and how they make it possible to back up a wallet with 12 words, which, by the way, if you memorize, gives you a brain wallet. It then covers multi-signature addresses that require two of three people to spend funds, including real demos using the Copay wallet. Trustless escrow operations using multi-signatures are covered next. Consider that when you send Bitcoin online, it's completely irreversible, so without an escrow service, it would be very easy for a seller to take your money and never ship a product. I review the current concerns with Bitcoin, including the block size debate, capacity limitations, and centralization pressures that seem to be threatening the very purpose of Bitcoin, decentralization. I talk about how fixes to these concerns might be implemented with soft or hard forks and the pros and cons of those routes. I give an overview of the latest new features like segregated witnesses, which might help with the capacity and block size debate, check lock time verify, and replace by fee, payment channels and lightning networks, which may increase capacity by orders of magnitude, and finally payment protocols that make online payments more secure, and the coin join protocol that can improve privacy. The fourth module goes beyond Bitcoin to talk about important altcoins and many decentralized projects that aren't currencies at all. The module begins with some suggestions for how to compare all these different systems, explains the difference between altcoins, metacoins, and sidechains, and answers questions like, why aren't all these new ideas just being directly added to Bitcoin? I then survey alternatives to proof of work, the linchpin idea behind Bitcoin that allows anonymous strangers to reach consensus. 
While incredibly elegant, many criticize the energy required and the centralization pressures it creates. I then give a thorough introduction to proof of stake, the leading alternative to proof of work, explaining how it works and its lingering questions. Next, the module talks about private or permission blockchains, or ones that aren't completely open. These are being experimented with by banks, corporations, and even governments. I attempt to answer the question, is a private blockchain any different or better than a distributed database? In speaking of databases, I cover Tendermint, Ripple, and BigchainDB, three systems that strive to vastly improve the performance of Bitcoin by utilizing the results of decades of distributed database research. Moving on, the course discusses new systems that aim to improve privacy, including Monero, ring signatures, stealth addresses, and zero-knowledge proofs with zero cash. Stability-focused coins are covered next, including Digix, Tether, BitUSD, and MakerDAO. These systems hope to offer the benefits of digital currency, that is, easy and low-cost transfer, programmability, etc., with the stability of the U.S. dollar. Then we dive into Ethereum, the first decentralized and open computer that promises to run unstoppable code, also called smart contracts. I give a demo of how to create and use smart contracts. An amazing number of applications can be built on top of Ethereum, like Augur, a prediction market. Prediction markets attempt to extract the wisdom of the crowd by making people bet on their predictions. Unlike political or sports commentators who lose nothing from poor predictions, prediction markets put participants' skin in the game. Also, IoT, or Internet of Things, is very briefly covered with Slocket's smart contract controlled digital locks. DAOs, or decentralized autonomous organizations, are also briefly mentioned and their potential to reshape how organizations operate. The last parts cover some entirely different but interesting areas like storage, including IPFS, and decentralized identity and reputation systems. I believe Bitcoin and decentralized technology have the potential to change how we interact online, reducing the cost, time, and trust required in myriad different applications. I hope this course helps people better understand the projects working towards that potential.